Welcome to PJ's Worship, a virtual worship experience brought to you by the First Congregational Church of Dudley, Massachusetts, a United Church of Christ church. It is wonderful to be here with you today. Welcome, welcome, and welcome. I am the Reverend John White, the extraordinarily blessed pastor of this First Congregational Church of Dudley, United Church of Christ. Folks who know me, call me Pastor John. I certainly hope that you will too. Welcome to worship uh, for this 22nd of January, the third Sunday after Epiphany, this week titled, Fighting the Winter Blahs. For more, see our weekly e-newsletter, PJ's Place, sent out just a couple of days ago, January the 20th, and PJ's podcast this week titled Comfort Food, which will be sent through our PJ's Place mailing list at 7 a.m. this Wednesday morning, the 25th of January. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for keeping this shared ministry alive and well. Welcome to those of you gathered here in our sanctuary. Welcome to you joining us on on YouTube this morning from wherever you are, from home, from assisted living community, from nursing home, perhaps from the hospital today. Welcome, welcome to you. To those gathered in our sanctuary, do know that in a short while I, I will be passing plates to our ushers who will be passing them to you And we will be taking a financial offering, as we always do, offering the best of ourselves in that way, back to our church family, 100% self-supporting in every single way. Everything from paying our staff to the heat to our outreach to the world in that way. To those joining on YouTube, thank you for continuing to send in your financial contributions the First Congregational Church of Dudley, 135 Center Road, Dudley, Massachusetts, 01571. God bless you. I see those coming into our mailbox, and I am so grateful. Thank you. Continue to check out all the websites, the Wider United Church of Christ at ucc.org, the Southern New England Conference at sneucc.org, and our local church at uccdudley dot org, where you'll learn so much about the vibrant life of this church family. Most importantly, and, and as the wider United Church of Christ wants us all to know, no matter who you are, no matter where you are, along this journey of your life, You are so deeply welcome here. Welcome. Welcome now. Several joys and concerns, as is always the case, gone out on PJ's Place this week. If if you don't know what PJ's Place is, um, visit our, our website, uccdudley.org, um, for more information about that. Uh, this uh, email that goes out every Friday, joys and concerns listed there uh, to highlight just a few of those and 
two additions today, and both of those will be joys, and that is a wonderful thing. All the concerns that we have been having for quite some time, continuing to be concerns, and sometimes folks are coming off the list and being added back on. So many health issues continuing within our church family. Uh, certainly David Prue, who was our acolyte just now, we continue to hold in prayer uh, with his own current uh, journey with cancer and recovery, uh, the Youngberg family back on the prayer list, uh, struggles with Nils' father who has uh, dementia and other health concerns, living with them in their home, so many things. Had a wonderful gathering with Amy Filippo this past week as I was leading worship out there at Life Care uh, in Auburn and had quite a group, a group of 17 uh, highly diverse people I was gathering with there. Uh, so much else to share. Do not forget that this coming Sunday is our annual meeting. So very important to remember that next Sunday is our annual meeting. It's going to begin with a potluck. It's the most important meeting in many ways uh, of our entire year. It's important that we have a quorum. Please, if you can, be there next week for our annual meeting. Uh, in PJ's place, you'll be able to read the preliminary annual report, and a special PJ's place is going out this week. I rarely do that. You have your PJ's place on Friday, and then the podcast's in on Wednesday. It is also an extraordinarily powerful tool for things like, should we have a weather emergency this win winter? It's hard to imagine in the moment, but it still could happen. PJ's place will be the place to go if you're wondering, have we said, please don't come to worship in person uh, that week. I'll send out a special PJ's place send with our final version of the annual report. And thanks so much to all of you for sending in your reports and for our church administrator, Sarah White, for putting all that together. Um, I want to say once again, thanks to Steve Tuhig for coming up with this Journeys project. I'm working with him on that, but he deserves at least 98% of the credit for all of that. Steve was the subject for the first journey, the story of Steve. I'm there this week. I, I left out one important detail. I couldn't imagine. I looked at it afterwards and I'm like, I'm going to add in for this week. I not only graduated from Drew University, I received a Master of Divinity degree. It's good for you to know that, because I couldn't be standing here as your pastor if I hadn't done that. Anyway, two joys to add today. Shepherd Hill Regional High School, our own Shepherd Hill Regional High School, out at Wachusett. Uh, yesterday, I was just talking to Ed, a member of our church family. He was out there. Great game. I believe the first time in Shepherd Hills history beating Wachusett there on their own turf. Now, Wachusett is a great school too, and God doesn't really care, but we're a lot of Shepherd Hill fans here, so I thought I would name that. And secondarily, uh, it is somebody's birthday today. It is Jason Hall's birthday today. And it's on my heart and mind to sing to him. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Jason. Happy birthday to you. How, okay, how old is he? I'll, I'll, I'll let you think about it this way. He is one of those years like 11 and 22, where there's two numbers and they're the same. That's all I'll say. Let's gather ourselves for a word of prayer. God, thank you for this time. 
Thank you for this time here in the middle of winter, in the middle of a time when some of us can start to feel the weight of so much. So bless us as we gather now and hear us as together we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us away from temptation. Deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Those gathered in the sanctuary, if you'd look for this black book, the New Century Hymn Book, and for those who comfortably can, let us stand and sing, but let us all sing together. Number 30, Colorful Creator. That's a beautiful hymn. I love that hymn. And Steve, wouldn't you agree that it seemed to work perfectly as we think about our journeys together? To someone who just walked in, I would say, I just raised up the basketball game. A little inside thing going on there. So children, 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 come on forward, children. Do we have any? I hope so. Come on. Michael, did you see the picture in PJ's place last week? Michael and I had a moment last week, a, a long moment. Jacob, come on forward. Come on forward. I'm so glad the Kolesniks are here today because you seem to be like holding down the fort. And here's something I, I, I don't want to read the wrong way. Like two weeks ago, the number of children was a little low. We had a great puppet story. Last week, no puppet story, a lot of children. 
So I don't know what it is. We got a wonderful puppet story today against Spider Man, Jacob. I love Spider Man. No, Spidey. Spidey. I said it wrong. It's Spider Man 2023. All right. Well, good to be here with you. And tell your friends to check this out on YouTube later today. Last week we spoke. Come on over. Come on over, Jacob. Last week we spoke about there being no snow on the ground and what you might do if there was some. And Jacob, I know you are here. Do you remember my story about the snowman? I made a headless snowman because I hadn't planned it very well when I was about your age and out there in a big field on the farm, no one else around. I just hadn't planned it well. Kind of a bummer. Well, this week we have a little bit of snow, but not too much. Maybe more coming, though. What do you think? What do you, how, Jacob, how is your new year going so far? It's going great? Yeah. Going great. Good, good, good. Well, I have brought another friend. Let's see how the new year is going for Pirate Jack. Does that seem like a good idea? Let's go see. Let's go see. Pow, yo, ho, yo, ho, a pirate's life for me. Yo, ho, yo, ho, a pirate's life for me. Yo, ho, yar, whatever. Doesn't seem like himself this morning. Uh, hey, hey there, Pirate Jack, uh, are you okay? <laughs> that's that's funny. You almost were trying to sound like old Pirate Jack. Ah, yeah, that's funny. Who would ever want to be Pirate Jack? <laughs> well, Pirate Jack, hey, hey, I think a lot of people might consider your life exciting. Out on the high seas, recently out there helping people in Ukraine, sometimes getting into trouble, you know, needing to remember not to have people walk the plank. And yet, you know, always wanting to learn how to be a different kind of pirate, living the love of Jesus. Tar, well, well, when you put it that way, my life does sure sound grand. Yeah. Yet these days, PJ, I'm just not feeling it. With all the tough news in the world, I wonder if it makes any difference at all. It gets dark so early, the crew is cold, they're grumpy, and there's not enough color anywhere. The world seems white and gray, Har. Oh, Pirate Jack. You know what, Pirate Jack? Arr, it seems to me that you have a case of the winter blahs. The winter blahs? Is that like COVID? The flu? An RSV? R. Now you're giving me some new purpose, PJ. I'm going to find that scallywag who gave me those blahs and make them walk the plank. I tell you, walk the plank. Arr, 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 arr. Arr, Pirate Jack, uh, calm down, calm down, calm down. And getting the blahs is not like catching a cold. It's more like people. The blahs are people? Sorry to cut you off short here, but PJ, you gotta go. All, all hands on deck. Hoist the anchor, raise the mainsail. Today we set sail to do battle with the Blahs. Arr, arr, arr. Whoa, whoa, Pirate Jack. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Calm down now, Pirate Jack. The Blahs aren't people. The Blahs are more like feelings. As I was saying, getting the Blahs is like when people wonder if their life has any meaning. Like when you were wondering if your life is making any difference in the world. Oh, R. Oh, okay, I see. And I was just starting to have some fun there. Now I feel all, oh, what's that new word you just taught me? Blah. I feel blah, R, blah. <laughs> oh, Pirate Jack. Hey, you need something to cheer you up. I've got just a thing, hey, two things really. Oh, here's the first one. Recently in my office, just down the hall, I discovered a Christmas present left there for you. I I've been waiting for just the right time to give it to you, and this seems like a great time. A uh, Christmas present? You just discovered something like buried treasure? Or Oh, this is exciting. Who's it from? Hell, let me tell you here. Uh, the note I received says it's from one of your biggest fans, 
to some guy named David Prue. Not well, 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 I do have many fans, you know. <laughs> Children in our sanctuary, on YouTube, and now this David Prue guy. All right, hey, thanks, David. After worship, come and see me. I'll have you fill out an application. Perhaps you can join me, crew. <laughs> uh, PJ, what did this David guy get me? Yeah, well, okay, I got it right here. Let's see. Uh, it's in this box here. Let me see. Oh, look at this. Look, it's very nice, Pirate Jack. Don't you think? Let me see here. It is a colorful pirate ship ornament. It just Perfect for battling the blahs. I'll hang it right here today and other times when you come by Pirate Jack. Arr, now that's so sweet. Thank you there, David Prue. Your kindness touches me, Pirate Heart. A PJ, you said you had two things to cheer me up. What's the other? Oh, right. Well, I want to share with you and with uh, Jacob and Michael and any other children who might be joining us and all the children of God gathered here. And one of them just had a birthday today, getting older and older, that guy. I want to share with you and everyone else, Pirate Jack, something a man in the Bible wrote. The Bible? The Bi <laughs> Did you see that one coming, the Bible from him? Yeah, I didn't see that coming. Go ahead. And his name is King David. We're thinking about two Davids today. This one, King David. And he said this in a type of poem called the Psalm, number 27, verse 8. He said this. He said, my heart has heard you say, God, come and talk with me. And my heart responds, God, I am coming. But what this means is this. When we're feeling blah or anything else, we can talk to God about it, and God will listen. The psalm also says, God is my light, which means God will help us find a way through the rough seas and tough times we are in. Arr, that's very good, PJ. And we pirates and all the children and everyone can be a light for one another, too. Helping one another battle the blahs and anything else which might bring us down. Battle the blahs! <laughs> That's funny. You should pray now. <laughs> all right. If you'd all repeat after me. God, thank you for David Prue. God, thank you for David Prue. And for King David. And for King David. Both offering gifts to Pirate Jacks. Both offering gifts to Pirate Jack, that's me. And to us all. And to us all. Gifts of color. Gifts of color. A listening ear. A listening ear. And a light. And a light. Guiding our way. Guiding our way. Through rough seas and tough times. Through rough seas and tough times. Amen. Amen. Thanks for coming by, Tar Jack. I hope you feel a little less blah. Feel, I think we've covered that. We're getting over the blahs here. <laughs> Off to somewhere interesting. Tell you about it next time. All right. Bye. 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 Have a wonderful morning down in Sunday school. Are We will move this pirate puppet stage and invite our choir to come forward. That's awesome.
Good morning. The cold and dark of January often has us seeking warmth and light. When the world turns white and gray, a variety of color becomes a gift. The winter can feel like a closed-in time and lonely. Events in the world and struggles in our personal lives are often frightening. And so, it is such a blessing to gather here seeking warmth, light, color, community, an inclusive welcome, beauty, and hope together. Listen to these words of David, the author of Psalm 27, verse 1, then verses 4 to 10. I'll read from the New Living Translation of the Bible. The Lord is my light and my salvation, so why should I be afraid? The Lord is my fortress, protecting me from danger, so why should I tremble? The one thing I ask of the Lord, the thing I seek most, is to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, delighting in the Lord's perfections and meditating in his temple. For he will conceal me there when troubles come. He will hide me in his sanctuary. He will place me out of reach on a high rock. Then I will hold my head high above my enemies who surround me. At his sanctuary, I will offer sacrifices with shouts of joy, singing and praising the Lord with music. Hear me as I pray, O Lord. Be merciful and answer me. My heart has heard you say, come and talk with me. And my heart responds, Lord, I am coming. Do not turn your back on me. Do not reject your servant in anger. You have always been my helper. Don't leave me now. Don't abandon me, O God of my salvation. Even if my father and my mother abandon me, the Lord will hold me close. Bless these words, God. May we find in them light, hope, and you. Amen. I just want, yes, that's... For some reason, I think when I was sitting, 
Um, I was probably pulling on the microphone cord or something. Because you can all hear me okay, right? Good, good. So, King David. See, it's interesting. I didn't really plan it that way today, but David Prue and King David being highlighted on the same day. King David begins verse 4 of Psalm 27 uh, by saying this, which Carol just read so beautifully. He says, the one thing, the one thing, I'm going to pause right there just to say, the older I get, the more my mind just goes, but um, you know, years ago when I started here, right? You know, and those of you who choose, you know, that there's a, there's a bio of me in PJ's place this week. And, you know, when you get out of seminary, you know, there's those three years, right? A long time. And, and uh, there were, it was always about, it was often about having three points, right? Reading three pieces of scripture, having three points. You fit it all into an hour, you know, and, and along the way, I just realized for myself how confusing I felt that was to most folks. And so I just narrowed it down, narrowed it down, narrowed it down. Now I'm like, more often than not, one piece of Scripture, one thought over three different ways of telling it between BJ's place, worship, and the podcast. And wow, if we can get one thing well each week. All right, so anyway, back here. King David begins verse 4, Psalm 27, by saying, The one thing I ask of the Lord, the thing I seek most. That's really narrowing it down. So I ask you to consider for a moment if you were to ask God for one thing, what would it be? Recently, this is true, if you hadn't heard it, many of you have, someone in the state of Maine purchased a winning lottery ticket which made that person wealthier than my favorite author. One of the wealthiest authors of all time, also living in the state of Maine, Stephen King. I just, right away. And knowing Maine as I do, I know that there's lots of really difficult places, impoverished places in Maine. And I, I don't know who this person is, but I've been thinking about it. Would that be the one thing that you would ask for? To have that level of sudden wealth? Because I want to tell you, we all, including myself, think that we could handle that better than everybody else. I do too. I know I'm the person who can handle it better than anybody else, but I know that you think the same thing. So what's your one thing? You don't need to share it out loud, but think about it. In the story of Aladdin, you know, in the genie and the lamp, the person who rubs, rubs that lamp gets three wishes. And if you do read Steve Tuhigg's most recent journey article, the one that focuses on myself, you'll see that during my teen years, and this is true, I nightly asked God for three things. Well, here David has narrowed it down to one thing, just one. What one thing would you ask for? More time, perhaps. I'm just basing a few thoughts here now on what I hear others speak about a lot. More time, perhaps. So many people struggle with time, wishing that there was more. Me too. So much of life has to do with choices, right? How often do you find yourself wishing you'd spent a certain amount of time 
in some different way. Time. Maybe you'd ask for happiness or simply a path to get there. Would you ask for success? If you did, have you figured out what you'd be asking for really? What does that mean? Success. My definition of success is definitely shifted over my nearly 61 years. Would you ask for a healthy relationship? And if you did, would you ask yourself what level of emotional health would I be bringing to that relationship? Would you ask for safety? Where do you seek safety now? Alarms, alerts, cameras, guns. This goes on. Would you ask for a more civil society in which people are more accepting of others' politics and religion? Yet then, would you pause to ask yourself, how often do I use disparaging and pejorative words to describe those with views different from my own? Well, back to King David. David has been through some tough times before becoming king and writing this psalm. Stuff which toughened him up a bit, right? The previous king named Saul has made several unsuccessful attempts to kill David. As I said last week, we, we pass these Bibles out to our kids. It amazes me. For example, in a fit of rage, Saul tried to pin David to a wall with a spear a few times. You can find that lovely story in 1 Samuel. He also devised a plan to have David killed in battle. Put him right up there on the front lines in just the worst position. An unsuccessful plan, yet likely nerve-wracking for David. Finally, Saul just commanded his men to kill David. Just forget all the game playing, just kill the guy. But with the help of both Saul's wife and son, who knew how unhinged her husband, his father, had become, David manages to escape. He spent years on the run, but his time in the wilderness was useful, making him more resilient. That's a word we don't maybe always think about enough. What makes us resilient? I consider myself Someone who is resilient. Increasing his capacity to both withstand and recover quickly from difficulties. But we never know. We never know how we'll react to his next situation. So this now resilient David says this. He says, the one thing... Oh yeah, I still haven't mentioned it. The one thing I ask of the Lord, the one thing, the thing I seek most, is this, to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, delighting in the Lord's perfections and meditating in His temple. In other words, David is most happy in the presence of God and most unhappy when he felt himself less connected to God's presence. Life cannot be lived, not really lived, free of all risk and danger. As Pirate Jack and I were discussing, battling the winter blahs, this would be the ultimate blah. To live without any risk and danger. That would be like blah. So the words of this psalm point us to live life in the presence of God. The one thing, God, the one thing David asked for so we may live our lives despite the circumstances with less fear. 
How do you become a more resilient person, whether you're battling winter blahs or some danger far more serious? I'll read to you this. This is from an article by Benedict Carey from the January 3rd, 2011 edition of the New York Times. An article titled, On Road to Recovery, Past Adversity Provides a Map. And I'll quote here. Character is a fine thing to admire, all right, once the storm has passed and the rigging is repaired. <clears throat> but when people are truly sinking because of job loss or illness or, or debt or some combination of ills, they have no idea they really have no idea what mix of character, connections, dumb luck will be enough to pull them through. To use the psychologist's term, they don't know how resilient they are or how much resilience even matters. Do I have the right stuff? Or is this sinkhole simply too deep? As with so many... <clears throat> Pardon me for one moment, this time of year. It's a little dry, sorry. As with so many of life's experiences, humans are simply not very good at predicting how they'll behave when hit by a real adversity, said Laura King, a psychologist at the University of uh, Missouri. New research suggests that resilience may have at least as much to do with how often people have faced adversity in the past as it does with who they are, their personality, their genes, for example, or what they're facing now. That is, and this is important, the number of life blows a person has taken may affect his or her mental toughness more than any other factor. Frequency makes a difference. That is the message, said Roxanne Cohen-Silver, a psychologist at the University of California, Irv Irvine. Each negative event a person faces leads to an attempt to cope, which forces people to learn about their own capabilities, about their support networks to learn who their real friends are. The pain, the self-doubt, the disorientation, the anger that swarm the consciousness in the wake of a job loss, a foreclosure, a divorce, can have some upside, even though it's not remotely visible at the time. Perhaps the one most fundamental thing you learn in living through an experience like this is that you can come out the other end of almost anything, Dr. King said. You say, well, it may have crushed me, but I survived, end quote. Before David became King David, he survived being chased time and again by crazy King Saul, by, by the way, my seminary professors would say, uh, King Saul who dealt with some significant mental health issues. Not to mention that little encounter with the giant he had. Remember that? He also made plenty of poor decisions along the way. I mentioned that last week. King David made a lot of poor decisions, that, that little thing with Bathsheba having her husband killed, very terrible. Few of us have lived faultless lives, and David helps us accept ourselves in that way too, yet he keeps striving, never giving up, not allowing himself to be buried in worry, fear, anxiety, depression seeking always God's presence as he faces whatever difficult circumstances that arise. 
Finally, I'll say this. Verse 5 of the psalm uses three metaphors to describe the full range of the coverage God offers. Shelter when troubles come, as they surely will. A hiding place in God's sanctuary. Now that may be here, literally, in community, but also a more private sanctuary within us. And a place of safety, out of reach on a high rock, says the psalm. For us, that high rock is the love of Jesus, which we find in community and alone, so we can know that we are never alone. Just before our responsive prayer, listen again to Psalm 27, 8. My heart has heard you say, come and talk with me. And my heart responds, Lord, I am coming. So now in prayer, when you hear, my heart has heard you say, come and talk with me. Please, res please say, my heart responds, Lord, I am coming. Let's pray. God, God, forgive me. I am often filled with debilitating fear and anxiety, causing me to shut down, close myself off, keep others out. Mass shootings, climate change, war in Europe threatening global peace, identity theft, cancer, threats to children, having enough money to retire, going to the dentist, the price of gas, so much more. Some days getting out of bed to start another day seems overwhelming. What I fear most, though, is facing all this without you. My heart has heard you say, come and talk with me. My heart responds, Lord, I am coming. Jesus, as I seek more time, may I choose to spend more time with you, meditating upon you in the temple of our church and within the temple of my heart. My heart has heard you say, come and talk with me. My heart responds, Lord, I am coming. Holy Spirit, I hear you through the wind and the trees. I hear you through experiencing the wonder of children. I hear you when I know I'm on the right road, and when I know I'm not. My heart has heard you say, come and talk with me. My heart responds, Lord, I am coming. Well, now it's time for this morning's offering. I'm going to come and collect these plates, hand them to our ushers, who will pass them to you. Please, each in your way, in proportion, it's really important. Give just as generously as you can.
Dearest God, I ask your blessing upon all gifts laid in around your altar and indeed throughout this sanctuary this day. No gift more precious than the gift of human life gathered here and each one's place of need or joy as they gathered here, either in this sanctuary or wherever they may be joining in worship at this time. Bless, dearest God, each gift of time and of our unique talents. We need one another, dearest God. And indeed, each of us is blessed differently when it comes to financial resources. So I ask your blessing, dearest God, upon these gifts that prayerfully each one has considered what giving in proportion means to them for the sustaining of this church family in this time now. God, forgive us. Forgive us for too often feeling we need to carry the weight of the world on our shoulders alone. Jesus, inspire us for all the ways in which we can make a positive difference in the lives of others. Holy Spirit, lift us out of our complacency, encouraging us to do what we can. God, Jesus, Holy Spirit, be light for us, helping us know we are not alone. Free us from unhelpful levels of worry and fear, from shouldering burdens which are not ours to carry, from postponing the life you have created for us to live. As we fight the winter blots, provide us in every one the comfort of your mercy and your love. When our heart hears you say, come and talk with me, our heart responds, God, we are here. Here we come. Amen. Amen and amen. And let us sing together one more time. You are the way, number 40. I often will say that it's someone like Clara who's our most experienced acolyte. That's always wrong. David is our most experienced acolyte. God bless you, David. And God bless you for all the gifts that you give to our church family as you gave a gift to Pirate Jack this morning. 
Dearest God, bless David. We pray for him the gift of health this day as he continues on a journey of, of seeking more health for himself. And dearest God, bless him and his family as we pray your blessing extend to all of us and to all of our families. As many of us now prepare to move from here to, to coffee hour down the hall to time of continuing conversation, we bless those simple gatherings, those simple joinings of mind and heart and of caring for one another, inspiring us out of the blahs to be our best always, to live life more without fear, to become the best of ourselves. Bless us and keep us, dearest God, your face shine upon us. Give to us and to all your world that which we most desperately need. Let it begin within our own homes and hearts. Your love, your peace. Amen. Thank you, David. Thank you.